this video too terribly long because we're talking about Guns N' Roses Usual Illusion 1 and 2. Uh, two albums or one. That, yeah, the two albums or one. I personally, I like to consider it as in the people who are watching this, feel free to comment because I'd like to hear your, uh, your differences and opinion on this. I consider it one album. Uh, now, if you buy the LPs, you're going to get four records, right. correct? Right, four you, records. You're going to get four records if you buy Usual Illusion 1 and 2. Uh, if you bought the cassette tape back in the day, you got two cassettes. If you buy the CDs, you're going to get two CDs. Um, I only consider them two different albums in the fact that you can buy them separately. Uh, I, I think they're all one piece of work. Uh, which is probably why they were released at the same time. Right. I don't see, I don't see Use Your Illusion One being released, and then like six months or a year later, Use Your Illusion Two being released. Um, there's a lot of similarities in both of them. There's a lot of differences too, but uh, they run the gambit on musical styles, everywhere from blues to hard rock. Um, love ballads. I mean, you're you're getting the whole spectrum. Classical, you know, you got orchestra orchestra th uh, themes in there. And uh, I I personally I consider it one one big ass long album. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on that? I agree. It's one long album because if you say they're two different albums, it's because you haven't listened to them back to back. Mm -hmm. Because there is a clear, distinct link and progression. Uh, yeah. To me, Use Your Illusion 1 is more of, uh, this is where we came from. Mm -hmm. this, is what, this is where we came from. And then they're, and they're on a course to where they're going. And yeah. it, it's a smooth transition from one where one ends and two begins. Mm -hmm. And then they progress through two into, um, into the future. And that, just now, I realize that my world is, that's is maybe this is the next step, you know? Because it's all electronic, uh, maybe sampling and yeah. shit like that. And there's not even any guitar in it. In my, not that I can hear anyway. Not that I can hear or pull out of it. In my opinion, I like two better than one. I do too. And, and, and it's because that. It's because two is is the now, well, at the time, was the now with Guns N' Roses. It's mm -hmm. what they had it evolved into. Yep. And uh, the music is classier. Mm -hmm. It is more grown up. It is more fulfilled, more mature. It's, I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's still got that edge, right. but at the same time, it's it, there's more room. Yeah, it's uh, refined. It's yes. much more refined. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. All right, so we're going to uh, flip this side over, and um, maybe we'll talk about some beer when we come back. So just hang in there. What if we go to two now? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's let's go. Okay, so we're back. We, and uh, we're back. And we're back. And we switched, uh, we actually switched uh, over to Use Your Illusion 2. And uh, what's on right now is Civil War. Uh, probably, probably my favorite song on Use Your Illusion 2. I do like it a lot. Yesterday's, um, I like it also. Maybe Tide for my favorite song. But the Civil War, I'm a big fan. Well, I'm a big fan of Civil War as well. And Yesterday's. Mm -hmm. And Get in the Ring is also one of my favorite songs. But I'm going to have to go with the producer's band's choice for a single and go with You Could Be Mine. You Could Be Mine. I Which, love that song. Yeah, that I song was also have. on uh, the Terminator 2 um, album, uh, soundtrack, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it, was, it was released on that, and uh, it was an awesome song for that oh, movie. Yeah. The way that movie flows and all the action to it, and that song just kind of fits in there perfect. So, right. uh, a, a kick-ass song for sure. Um, so, uh, Use Your Illusion 2, this is the blue and the purple one here. Um, and uh, again, this song, this album, this part of the album has 14 songs on it. So it just, and it, like he said, it it's more refined and more, 
more, I don't want to say more put together, but it's just, it's different. Yeah. It's, it, it closes the, it closes the whole collection of songs out perfectly, I think. Um, so, what about the beer? Let's talk about the beer a little bit. All right. Let the, me know about the beer. It's a traditional half and half, uh, introduced in 1986. Really? So... I thought it was kind of new for them. Maybe they just broke out into some different shit because they're mm -hmm. branching out. But right. no, they've been making this for a while. And uh, we wouldn't know that though, because it's just been available in Kentucky this year. So. Yeah, last month. Last month. In right. March, it uh, it just became available to us uh, hillbillies. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> you know, we had to go all the way to Indiana or Tennessee. Or Tennessee, right? To get it. And Indiana is just across the river. <laughs> yeah, it's not that far, but still, you know, it's kind of kind of pain in the ass when you got a good beer and you got to go, you know, 40, 50 miles to get it. Right. It's kind of kind of crazy. But There's enough good beer here and not yeah. to go get it. Whatever the legalities were for it not to be here, I'm glad they got all that worked out for distribution purposes and that it's here now. So. Right. Yeah. But Keith did mention that it is... Um, the oldest brewery in the nation. I don't know if we got that out enough, but I'll add it in there one more time. Did you know it was the oldest brewery? I, not until we started doing this video. <laughs> <laughs> not until I told you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what's the, uh, do you have the alcohol volume on this? Uh, it's 4.6. So not not too bad, and you could sit and drink several of these, you know. Or it's your standard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, a good bonfire. I always relate a beer to a good bonfire. Uh, a good meal, just sitting around bullshitting and listening to music like we do. Uh, you can have your fill of these and you know not not get totally wasted. Right. So drink up, America. Drink up. Roasty and sweet. Would you agree? I will agree on the sweet. It's got a subtle sweetness to it. Roasty, I don't know. When I think of roasty, I think of like coffee. I don't. I don't yeah, know. I'm not. I don't, I don't know where roasty comes in at, but if anybody does know, please share. I don't agree with the roasty. Um, I feel like that on ta on draft it was probably more flavorful. Mm. Uh, I think it was probably uh, with a lot of beers on draft they are much better to me. Mm. But uh, I think it's hard once you put them in the bottle. The I think it, the flavor is lost a little bit. Yeah. And in the can as well. Most most anything tastes better, you know, on tap than right. you know, than it being shipped all the way to wherever it's shipped to and then set in you know on a shelf or in a cooler for however long and before somebody buys it, you know, whatever. But it is a good a it good is. easy drinking beer. I would definitely suggest going and, and getting it if you've not tried it. Right. Just go get it and drink it, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. I think this was six ninety nine for a six pack, so you're not gonna break the bank either. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it a craft beer. No. Um, and you're definitely not going to pay the craft beer price for it. So, you know, if you want something a little different, you've not tried it, go out and get some. I mean, it's awesome. Full of flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Marlboro's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else we got about the beer? Anything else? I don't know if it's. Um, I don't know if it's IBU eligible or not. Is it uh, less than IBU on it? No. Or? I didn't. It's I didn't bad. pull one off the website. Right. Yeah, you got, got a, a classy website too. Go, go, go check it out. All right. That Yingling, the oldest brewery in the nation.com. Mm -hmm. Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah. So I'll try to put a link to uh, Yingling's uh, website. Anytime uh, anybody in the says of this that. Video. Anytime anybody says that, I picture old brick building <laughs> falling apart. Right. Right. With yeah. No electric. They got um, like wooden vats in there and shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like the whole place is dilapidated, getting ready to fall in on itself. Yeah. Yeah, but they make good beer in that because it's seasoned just right. like that, that coffee cup you never washed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's true. Why do people do that? I don't know. I, I know, know people do that. Do that. I, don't, I don't see why. Oh, okay, anyway. All right, so uh, I, I want to add my opinions. Again, this is my opinions. There's nothing factual to what I'm getting ready to say. And uh, then maybe Keith has uh, his opinion on uh, Usual Illusion 1 and 2 also. I think that Usual Illusion 1 and 2 are the pinnacle of Guns N' Roses. Okay, I would say it's at the top of the work that they did together. I would also say that it was the demise of Guns N' Roses. In um, 
I mean, they they were at the height of their popularity when these albums came out, or album. I like to consider them albums. Uh, they went on tour, and they had a blockbuster tour with Metallica that they couldn't hold together. You know, canceling uh, appearances and starting riots. Not that they physically started a riot, but they caused people to get so upset that they made riots happen. Right. Um, in the recording of these albums, uh, they lost uh, drummer Steven Adler, that, that, and then um, uh, they lost uh, guitarist Izzy Stradlin. Um, so you're, you're losing core original members of the band, which I think with Steven there was a lot of drugs involved in that, so I mean right. it's kind of understandable. Um, but you know, losing losing your, your drummer, losing your rhythm guitar player, um, in the middle of a recording process has got to be killer on the band. Now, I think they, they, the people they had come in and finished and stayed with them throughout the tours and stuff like that, I think they did an awesome job. Um, Matt Sorum. Matt Sorum, uh, the drummer. Um, but, you know, those guys went on to do other things after their breakup with Guns N' Roses. For instance, um, Izzy Stradlin, he had an album that not a lot of people know about. Uh, titled Izzy Stradlin and the Juju Hounds. Uh, this is a great album. If you've not listened to it, look this up and listen to it. It's, um, I would call it Guns N' Roses Light, maybe, uh, but it's, this is a really solid rock and roll album, so check that out. And then, of course, of course the more popular of the breakout would be uh, Velvet Revolver with uh, Duff and Slash and Matt. Um, and then, the, of course, the, the vocalist was uh, Scott Weiland from uh, Stone Temple Pilots fame. Um, another awesome album. If you've not listened to this, check it out. It is, it is superb. A lot of killer tracks. A lot, I wish these guys had stayed together uh, longer than they, than they did because this is, I mean, it's just an awesome, awesome album. Um, so, again, back to Guns N' Roses, so these... Uh, Usual Illusion 1 and 2, I think it was the height of their popularity, their creativity, and then it, it also had, a, had a, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, a part in their, their demise. I think if you listen to these albums, and I know a lot of people kind of get on the bandwagon of, you know, thinking Guns N' Roses is a joke, they couldn't hold it together, you know, they broke up, blah, 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 uh, it's aged music, whatever. Um, you listen to these two albums, and there's a, there's a possibility that they didn't stay together. They could have just went on to be as you know big as the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I, I say that the reason I say that is because their their total spectrum of music on Usual Illusion One and Two was Rolling Stones esque. Rolling Stones could do they could do some hard rock. They could just do regular rock and roll. Uh, blues. You listen to a Rolling Stones album, you're going to hear a lot of blues. And country. And country influences. And that's all on these albums. So if they would have been able to stay together and egos aside, you know, um, it, it, I always think what could have been the next real Guns N' Roses album. I don't necessarily consider Spaghetti Incident and Chinese Democracy. Uh, Chinese Democracy is an album I think it took Axl Rose 10 years to record. Yeah, put together. And I don't consider it, a, even though it's got the title, you know, the band name Guns N' Roses, I don't consider it Guns N' Roses. No. I, I, and no, I, I think don't. if you set Axel down seriously, he'd probably mm -hmm. take the same thing. Yeah. So that's just my little soapbox on, uh, on Usual Illusion 1 and 2. Again, I think it was their best effort ever. I also think it probably helped, you know, destroy the band. So, anyway, that's all I've got to say on that. So, do, you, do you have opinions on this? I, I don't know. I think the band was dying on its own, but uh, definitely it was Axel pulling his weight mm -hmm. with these albums. And man, you know, people say what they will about Axel, but he is a uh, a true artist and creative genius and he challenged the band and pushed them and you know was molding them into something whether they wanted to to be that or not and they those guys realize that now yeah they wouldn't be together if they didn't realize that right you know 
So in my opinion, you know, yes, they were self-destructing, but you know, everybody had a hand in that shit, mm -hmm. you know. Axel, the, uh, all the guys in the band, you know, Duff will tell you that. They were they were killing the, the booze and the drugs and... <laughs> they were living the life. Oh, I mean, they yeah. were They were doing it. That, so. that, they were all about that. They were, yeah. the band was more about that than they were the music, mm -hmm. really. And yeah. Axel was, was pummeling the music out of the guys, mm -hmm. you know. And to me, Use Your Illusion 2 is the better of the albums. It is the stand-up. Let's do the rating in there. So it's the better half of the album. The better half of the album. Okay, yes. All right. All right. Yes. All right. So you want to rate it? I'll let you go first. I'll go first. I'm going to rate User Illusion One a three. Just a barely a three. It barely gets a three. Uh, why do I give it a three? Mm -hmm. And barely a three is because it's forgettable. A lot of the tracks are forgettable. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're not good. That doesn't mean I, I don't want the album. I don't right. have one. But I, I do want the album. But uh, it is, once you listen to it, it's it's gone. But now, on the other hand, Use Your Illusion 2, four and a half. Four and a half of, on it? Out of five. Yeah. Because uh, most of the tracks are solid mm -hmm. and you remember them you want to it's not just because i own it that's just the <laughs> way it is i mean those tracks are the they're better they're like i said they have more room more space mm -hmm. they've got their legs and they're more refined as you said and yeah. it's, it's just a uh to me uh it's more solid uh the songs are just yeah. there. I would give the first half of the album number one. I would give it a four. Um, I'm partial to yellow and red together. Ketchup and mustard, <laughs> um, or orange and yellow, whatever you want to, however you want to look at that. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. I, I, I would give it a four. I do like Use Your Illusion two, the second half. I do like it better, and I would probably give it a four and a half, maybe a five. Um, and this is going to be really stupid to say, but if it wasn't for My World at the end of it, I would probably give it a five. <laughs> my World just, I, I mean, we, we've, we've said our opinion on that, but it just it just doesn't fit, in, in my opinion. just doesn't fit in with everything else. It's just, it's out there. I don't know. Maybe it was also meant to be a, you know, a, a lead-in to the next real album. I don't know. But, I don't know. Uh, I would I would give it a four and a half. They're both solid halves together. And if if you if you have them and you've not ever listened to them from song one to song thirty, you need to do that. I mean that's yeah. just like uh, it's like watching uh, Star Wars movies out of order. Like let's watch episode two and then let's watch episode six and then let's watch episode one. Just just listen to them back to back. Use Illusion one all the way through. And uh, if you've not ever done that before, you may get a, a new opinion on both of them. And uh, you may appreciate the music more. So, Yeah, that's Use my Your opinion Illusion on 1 is more about their influences, mm -hmm. I, I feel. They're, I mean, to me, I can pull out the Doors, the Rolling Stones, sure. yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, of course, Alice Cooper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just more of a punk feel, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. The second half feels more like uh, Guns N' Roses. Yeah. One thing I don't know, and it'd be interesting to kind of find out, is whether the songs were recorded in any certain order, or whether it was just a big mix-up, and then they just decided this one's going to go on Use Your Illusion 1, that one's going to go on Use Your Illusion 2. That would be interesting to know. It would how, be interesting to know how they how recorded they them. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the beer, I rate the beer. We rated the album. I rate the beer. I'll give the beer a three and a half. I'd also give it a three and a half. I wish it had a little bit more body to it. It's kind of light, um, but that's kind of where I guess the porter comes in. In my opinion, porters are kind of light bodied anyway. I, I don't know. Usually um, porters, usually I don't care for porters. 
I don't usually care for porters either. Um, They're usually way too sweet. Uh, yeah, it's 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 you can taste the sweetness in the beer. Um, until Keith said that it was a porter, I didn't know that it wasn't a stout because I've only heard of black and tans being made with stout. So perhaps I'm just not educated enough to know any better. I, I don't know, but um, I think I'll give it a three and a half, and uh, it's a solid beer. I'll drink it again. It could be because they don't make a stout. Could be. I didn't I didn't research that deep, but I didn't see a stout on their website, right. and I didn't look at their seasonal, but they may not make a stout, so. So if you're watching this video and you would like for us to try and actually make a real black and tan the real way with it layered in a glass, leave some comments down below and uh, we get enough interest in that. Maybe we will uh, we'll experiment with making some black and tans with the whole spoon and everything. I'm no good at it. Keith claims that he can do it. So. I've done it once. <laughs> so he's, he's uh, more of an expert than I am at it. Uh, all right, so we both give the beer three and a half. We both have uh, opinions on uh, the album. Uh, but if I didn't own the album, Keith, would you say, James, you have to go out and get them? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I would say the same thing. you got to go out and get them. Um, Guns N' Roses, it, you know, they are what they are. Say about them what you will. Some people love them. Some people just absolutely hate them. Um, but I think either way, you gotta listen to these albums if you haven't before, and then make a make a decision, and not just the fact that it's Guns N' Roses, but just a different. See if you can listen to to the album and see if there's any influences that you can pick out from bands that you like that you're listening to on on these songs. So, anything else you'd like to add? I really have to piss. Okay, so he's gonna go <laughs> piss. I'm maybe going to have another black and tan here, so uh, it's good to be back and being able to do videos again. And Keith, it's uh, I'll toast you, but I'm empty here. I am too. Oh, shit. <laughs> so it's good to be back with you, sir. And uh, until next time, I'm James. And I'm Keith. And we appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Peace. It was more smooth, but that shit wasn't right. fucking smooth. Right.